you could. In today's session, Dolov Zemmer and Tiander Sherpin will take us through Better Together, Microsoft Sentinel ITOT threat monitoring with Defender for IoT solution. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to them. The floor is yours. Hey Ashley, thank you for the great introduction. Uh, let me quickly start sharing my screen and we'll go ahead uh, with our show for today. All right, so thanks everyone for joining us. My name is uh, uh, Dolov Zemmer I'm with the Defender for IoT team. Uh, I've been with uh, Microsoft for the past uh, two years or so, and before that with uh, CyberX, who then was uh, acquired by Microsoft. With me today, I also have uh, Tiander Turpin. Tiander. Hey everyone, my name is Tiander, as Dolev introduced me. I'm a program manager within uh, Microsoft, Microsoft Sentinel, our cloud SIM uh, product. I've been uh, within Microsoft with Microsoft over two decades, so that's a long, uh, long time. Um, and I would love to uh, have this uh, great session with uh, together with all of the community members. Appreciate you joining together with Dolev. Thanks. Thanks, Dander. Right, so moving on to show you the agenda we have for today. We'll start with some uh, uh, background on uh, IoT and OT security for those of you uh, um, who don't have that uh, uh, prior knowledge. We'll touch on Defender for IoT and the uh, uh, challenges we help our customers face. We'll then talk about uh, 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 Sentinel and then we'll mash them together to show you um, how they work best. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let me go ahead and start with the show. So just a bit of background, uh, Defender for IoT came from what was before uh, CyberX. CyberX was founded in uh, 2013 by uh, Blue Team uh, Cyber Defenders, ex-IDF, uh, and basically uh, started together with the uh, uh, OT security world. Uh, very, very widely spread with uh, customers worldwide, and in June 2020 was acquired by Microsoft uh, and assimilated into the uh, Azure and Microsoft security stack. When we talk about uh, uh, IoT and IoT security, it's important to remember one very, very big thing. The attack surface is constantly growing at a rate that uh, I don't think anyone can uh, really uh, anticipate. We see that about 75% of uh, enterprise organizations have over 5,000 IoT devices. That's huge. Um, with COVID-19 and everyone going remote, think of all the challenges that poses. A lot of the organizations will remain uh, working remote for a long time. Some of them will work with uh, uh, hybrid uh, models. So that also contributes to the uh, increasing attack surface. CISOs now have to face some, something like three times the attack surface they needed to uh, just a few years ago. So. With that uh, 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 in mind, we need to try and understand how we can address these uh, emerging threats. Defender for IoT uh, is now a suite of uh, 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 products. We'll uh, touch a bit on the, uh, some of them and we'll dive uh, deeper into uh, specific ones uh, today. Starting with uh, uh, what we title here as the uh, security microagent. So consider uh, device builders, the companies that build the uh, IoT uh, thermostat in your house, the, um, the routers that you build, uh, the healthcare IoT devices that you have. This part of the product uh, is aimed at them to help them build in and bake in uh, Defender security within their products in the manufacturing uh, uh, stage. Enterprise IoT is the uh, part that helps the organization defend all the agentless IoT devices in their network. So think about VoIP phones, printers, uh, smart coffee machines, as well as their uh, network equipment. This product is now in the uh, public preview and we invite you to uh, look further into this. And of course, joining all of this 
and apart from Defend of IoT, is Defend of Endpoint, which you uh, might already know about. And this really helps uh, push all the information that we have into uh, the rest of the Microsoft security stack. Today, we will be focusing on the industrial side of IoT. So OT and ICS, think about manufacturing uh, from suitable companies. This is the part of the uh, uh, field that we'll try to protect today, and uh, we'll dive uh, deeper into this. So OT, operational technology, what is it? Um, think about smart factories, pharma, like I said, power generation. A lot of these uh, organizations and their facilities uh, were designed and built uh, during the 80s and the 90s, uh, where security was not baked in. It was presumed that if you can access the uh, assets, then you can probably be allowed to alter things and change things, turn it on and off. And security really was baked into that. Now, think about such a, a factory like an automotive factory and think that now they are trying to modernize, right? Everyone is talking about digital transformation. So what happens when you put into that kind of network uh, wireless access points and you try to modernize uh, manufacturing? These networks are no longer air-gapped, uh, and now you have uh, uh, new threats that you didn't have before. And this really takes us into the discussion on how OT security is just a bit different from IoT or IT security. So for IT security, we usually uh, and traditionally focus on data confidentiality, uh, keeping privacy in check, making sure that all our uh, different uh, applications and all our networks stay connected. And we have standard protocols and devices. I know what a laptop is, I know what a smartphone is, and I know what HTTPS, HTTP is, everything that we already know. And of course, uh, we have multiple layers of uh, control and telemetry. So I have my uh, firewalls and I have my uh, um, identity uh, management. This is a, a standard, uh, standard issue for IT security. But when we come into the realm of OT, the priorities there are a bit different. First priority, if you ask a plant manager, is the safety of the uh, uh, workers in that facility. Second priority for them, manufacturing. The production line can't stop. It's not like I can put in a firewall within uh, uh, the plant and it will block something uh, uh, accidentally and no longer we're manufacturing that specific dough for that specific uh, uh, car. Uh, so those are the top two priorities in the uh, uh, OT realm. On top of that, like I said earlier, it's traditionally air-gapped, so it wasn't baked with security in mind. Take that into account with uh, specialized protocols uh, from a lot of different vendors that you have there that are not uh, uh, in the regular realm of IT, and also no visibility. If you don't have uh, active scanners, which you can't have in uh, OT environments, you don't have visibility into your network, and um, that causes a problem. So this brings us into the discussion on Defender for IoT. Defender for IoT is an agentless and passive solution uh, within uh, the network. This requires you to uh, install either a virtual machine or a physical server for Defender for IoT and uh, span the traffic or mirror the traffic uh, uh, from your switch of the OT uh, uh, environment. So if we look at the, uh, uh, your environment as an organization, you have Defender for IoT protecting your enterprise, and you have, a, sorry, Defender for Endpoint protecting your uh, enterprise, and Defender for IoT uh, uh, protecting your OT environment. Spanning the traffic for that environment through Defender for IoT, your local on-prem server, and then connecting that as a cloud-connected server um, to Azure. Once all the information is in uh, uh, Azure, 
you can also uh, uh, connect it straight into Sentinel to have a centralized uh, view for all your environments. So see in one place uh, both uh, uh, your IT environment, your OT environment, and get data from all your sensors. This is where we'll start uh, uh, and really try and answer what are the challenges that our customers face and how we help them uh, uh, meet those challenges. So let me uh, reshare my screen here. Hopefully you're able to see this. So, first order of business is to get some discovery, right? You don't, uh, you can't protect what you don't see. So, if I go straight into my uh, Defender for IoT platform here, this is what you get when you uh, start uh, working with Defender for IoT. This is our overview page, trying to give you a uh, the most important information up front. So here I can already see that I have uh, 76 uh, uh, devices, assets uh, uh, in my network. I can get a good uh, uh, look at what protocols I have in my network, um, what ports I'm running, what's my general bandwidth. In this case, uh, the plant is uh, uh, shut down for now, but uh, uh, we, we played some traffic uh, earlier. And I can get a good glance of my uh, alerts. You can also notice here that I have my latest uh, uh, threat intel. Since this is a cloud connected server and um, I'm connected to Azure, once uh, the Defend of IoT team releases a new threat intel package, it's automatically updated and I can get the latest uh, information and threat intel uh, delivered right here. Jumping into my uh, device map. So once traffic starts playing, Defender for IoT does deep packet inspection and uh, gets you a good uh, uh, view of the network inside your organization. So if I go through the different layers here, I can see that I can check what OT protocols I have here, what known applications I can see, uh, as well as my uh, subnet layout and other uh, information. If I dive deep, deeper into this map, I can already see that I have some internet connections which we might uh, need to uh, drill deeper into later on. In my supervisory layer, uh, the layer um, which uh, usually the OT engineers would access, I can see that I have certain uh, HMI, so human machine interfaces. I can see that I have some engineering workstation and for each of these, if I uh, try to look at their connections, I can see, okay, these two devices uh, are communicating uh, between each other. I can see what type of connection uh, do they have, when, when was uh, the last time they uh, communicated, as well as I can take a deeper look into that asset. So this, for instance, is an engineering workstation working uh, uh, alongside uh, HMIs and other uh, uh, machines. Dropping further into uh, uh, my network, I can see that this is uh, the process control layer and I can see the different PLCs and the different protocols uh, they have, as well as dive deeper into those uh, assets. For instance, this is a Delta V controller that has uh, many modules uh, connected in the back of it. Now, remember that all of this is done passively no active uh, uh, um, operations in the network. This is all through deep packet inspection and the proprietary uh, protocol analysis. I can also try to uh, uh, view this information as, uh, as uh, in a table view in my asset inventory. And this is very uh, uh, comfortable for a lot of uh, uh, organizations to be able to export this and work with uh, uh, other systems as well. So we covered the first part, right? So as a discovery, you can protect what you don't see. We got that covered. For risk and vulnerability management, um, we need to uh, look at another layer. So one of the uh, important uh, capabilities that we have in Defender for IoT is the ability to uh, generate a risk assessment report. 
So if I generate a, a, a report here, that creates for me a PDF. And if I download this PDF, I can see that this basically runs an analysis of my entire network and my security posture. We get 41% uh, score, which isn't very good. So coming up on the next quarter, we might need to do some planning on this. This really gives me some actionable information. So if I drop here, I can see an executive summary. I can see what type of uh, vendor equipment I have in my network. I can see um, that I can simulate some attack vectors for some of my uh, PLCs. I have some active internet connections. And for each of these, I can see, okay, if I mitigate, if I update the firmware uh, to the latest on these seven assets, I can increase my security score by 14%. So this is uh, your part of the executive summary, but if the engineers want to dive uh, deeper into this, all the information is right here. You can see the active CVEs, et cetera. Uh, and this is very good for teams that are trying to plan ahead and see how they can improve their uh, uh, security posture. So going back into my uh, sensor, so this is my risk assessment. One other thing that I can do is that I can uh, simulate attack vectors and see, okay, if I want to see what an attacker would do uh, in my network, what are the uh, ways in that they have? This also allows me to simulate that and see, okay, I see an open internet connection here. This is interesting. We might need to look more into that later because if they get, can get to this engineering workstation, they can jeopardize my uh, programmable logic controllers and my entire network. So that covers us for uh, risk uh, and vulnerability management. Continuous IoT and OT. So this brings us really uh, uh, into the middle of it, into the day to day. And uh, this brings us into the alerting. So we generate uh, uh, alerts. We can decide uh, uh, to investigate them here or to investigate them uh, in our uh, SIM SOC, depending on uh, what part of your organization is in charge of this, and we'll get to uh, that a bit later in our presentation. And you can get all your inf information about the incident right here, uh, and you can really get all the information on which devices are uh, relevant, as well as uh, take a look at the uh, uh, event that led into this uh, uh, incident. Furthermore, if you want to see more uh, information apart from the alerts, you can uh, check out the event timeline and see all the different events that uh, are transpiring within the uh, uh, within the network. So we're covering risk vulnerability, visibility, continuous IoT and OT, uh, threat monitoring, operational efficiency. So we mentioned that uh, uh, for OT engineers, one of the top most important things is keeping the factory running, right? So a lot of our alerts are not only uh, security related, but also uh, operational uh, uh, related. So if we see, for instance, a uh, Modbus exception, so Modbus is an OT protocol, and we see that um, some uh, uh, PLC sent uh, an exception to the engineering workstation, this is something that an OG, OT engineer would probably need to take a look at and find out and see if we have some misconfigurations in the network. And lastly, um, IT, OT, security monitoring and governance. So, like we said, we want to be able to collaborate between uh, OT engineers and uh, stock operators. One way we can do that is create uh, forwarding rules from uh, uh, this local sensor to other uh, uh, SIM solutions. Uh, Sentinel uh, uh, is being one of them, but uh, it's connected in a different way as we'll see in a second, but we have other vendors that we can definitely um, uh, work with. Uh, we don't uh, uh, limit ourselves uh, uh, just to the Microsoft tech, but of course this presentation focuses on the way that Defender for IoT collaborates along with uh, Sentinel. So with that, Tiander, uh, I'll give it back to you. Thanks, Olev. <clears throat> if you can put up the PowerPoint slide, then I'll talk about why the better to get a story with Sentinel and Defender for IoT is, is great. Uh, so we do have uh, a couple of advantages, multiple advantages 
uh, over um, the regular connections and the integrations that uh, Dolef uh, just uh, showed. Dolef, do you want to pull up the slide deck? Yeah. Uh, what what I go, what I'm going to talk about is is just getting us on the same page uh, for Sentinel. Maybe the majority of you have seen this slide before or are using actually Sentinel in in, uh, in your environment. But just a quick kind of um, uh, getting on the same page. Microsoft Sentinel, our cloud-born native SIM, um, which will give you advantages uh, based on the cloud that we are running, the biggest cloud in the world, right? So we don't have limitations on, on scaling. Uh, we can scale dynamically. Um, no reason for you to set up infrastructure or do all the things that uh, you not, might need to do on premises with servers and, and disks and stuff like that. So we take huge benefit of our Azure cloud. Um, so there's no limitations uh, for us, for you as a customer to run um, Microsoft Sentinel. Because of the, the, the big volume of signals that we are getting in, uh, and also our machine learning capability and all detection and also our security experts. We have multiple teams behind the scenes that are working every day on security. You will be able to detect evolving threats. So it's not that you install a SIM product and uh, you have to wait on, on updates and stuff like that. This is what we do day by day improving the product and extending the, um, um, the scope of what we are detecting. And because of this uh, efficiency, we, um, we invested uh, a lot in how SOC analysts today with a modern SIM are now looking at incidents and trying to prevent uh, SOC analyst fatigue by making this a very efficient uh, process, which I will cover in the demo in a second. And because of this efficiency that we've reached with our cloud-born SIM, uh, you now have the ability to get ahead of attackers and not um, being kind of reactive and, and hunting for incidents uh, that you are losing a lot of time with. So if we uh, go to the next slide, uh, I'll talk a little bit uh, holistically briefly uh, about how data gets in. So first and foremost, we are having a high number of data connectors, which allows us to bring data into Sentinel in a very efficient way. You click on a data connector of interest, and with a couple of clicks, you have configured that data connector to ingest that data. So obviously we, will, we are covering the Microsoft services with our so-called first party data connectors, but also beyond that, right? We have a multi-cloud strong strategy to integrate with AWS, with GCP, uh, other applications, users from not only Azure Active Directory, but also other identities. All your on-prem uh, assets are not left behind, so we, we get the best of both worlds. And right from the start, we integrated with our security solutions partners like Symantec, like Cisco, Palo Alto, etc. Now, when you get the data in, and not only Defender for IAT data, but any data that you send to uh, Microsoft Sentinel, we will give you kind of good visibility solutions uh, to look at the data. And what I mentioned in the beginning, our machine learning, our user entity behavior analytics, all of that goodness fusion, the correlation, threat intelligence, uh, allows us to be very efficient with enrichment and uh, be able to enrich the data that you're ingesting. We are basing our, our foundation of data with um, on Azure Monitor, which have, have been there for, for a long time. So our data repository is focused on that, um, that service that Azure Monitor runs. But we also embracing our open source world and community by integrating with Jupyter Notebooks, which are natively part of Microsoft Sentinel. And talking about SOAR capability, automated and response, this is where we're leveraging another great Azure service called Logic Apps. And this allows us to, um, to build that bridge with other systems, uh, ITSM systems like ServiceNow, but any other tool you want to integrate, which offers a Logic Apps a large library of building blocks uh, to make your, your automation task really simple. 
Um, as if you've not seen it today, we have a rich, vivid uh, GitHub community where we embrace all the, the members of that community to submit new ideas, new artifacts, new solutions, and, and what, what more. So um, the next slide is an introduction for me to show you how you can actually kind of connect uh, in a very easy way Defender for IAT with Sentinel. So let me go ahead and uh, and share my uh, screen. Sharing my screen. So um, this is the landing page of Microsoft Sentinel, and there are plenty of uh, of sessions out there which will cover each of these rich kind of capabilities that we have: threat intelligence. Uh, data, data connectors, but let me sp focus specifically on IET. We're on the better together kind of story here. So what does it take for you to connect Defender for IET, which is one of our biggest advantages? Well, you look for the IET connector right here and you click on open connector page. And after you've done that, uh, you can connect any subscription that you have access to and where the Defender for IoT solution uh, is running. So this allows you to kind of connect your subscription with just one single click of a button, that's it. The next thing that you might want to do is to enable the out of the box rule that we bring with this connector. So the only thing that you need to do is click on the create rule button right here, which will then gives you that analytics rule and gives you already the data that you can see uh, flowing, uh, flowing in. And there's also a workbook that comes with uh, that disconnector. So it has a dashboard capability to visualize what it is that uh, you need to do. Now, when you are here and you've connected it, there's an additional solution that we also have available for you. If you navigate to our content hub right under the content management, so the content hub, if you've not worked with this before, is based on the marketplace. Uh, so it uh, it gives you all the kind of uh, the capabilities and the solutions uh, that we have. And I can simply look for uh, the uh, uh, solution that we have for you uh, with one click to download and install. And as you can see right here, that solution comes with uh, 14 analytics rules, uh, three playbooks and a workbook. And because I've already installed it, I can uh, click on update if I want to update this or install it. And after you've done that, um, you will see that the analytics rules sections under configuration, if I click on, uh, on analyt analytics, gives you the capability to use those uh, analytics rules. So let me search for IoT. So you can see here my different rules, which, uh, which came partly with the data connector. Uh, so you can see here the uh, the data connector that that has brought this uh, rule in, but you can also create your custom uh, analytics rules. So when you click on create, you can create your own custom rule if you want to, but we will jumpstart you with analytics rules. As mentioned, the solution comes with a rich workbook, two workbooks actually, and I'm going to show you the workbook that comes with the solution that you can download for free uh, under the content hub. As you can see here, uh, we're looking uh, at the dashboard. I can pick my subscription of choice, my workspace of choice, uh, pick the, the, the range, and you can see here my top alerts already surfacing. I can have some nice graphics here where I can pivot over to what a spike is. I can see the different uh, alert counts based on the alert engine, and I can see vendors. Uh, what kind of vendors do I have? And then on the second tab, uh, you will find your uh, incidents. Also for your SOC analyst to have an easy way to look at, uh, at specific incidents to kind of uh, uh, look at. Um, so efficiency, how is the SOC uh, team doing, MTTR, and also um, here I can see the incidents where I can easily look at the severity, go directly to the incident, and also uh, kind of more information. One additional thing I wanted to show you is the MITRE framework alignment. 
many times ask, how do we align with MITRE? So specifically for Defender for IoT, you can see here that we are giving you kind of a tactics overview, uh, tactic details, all of that rich uh, content for you to explore. And finally, uh, the, the integration here. Sentinel has an overall MITRE um, framework alignment, but I just wanted to focus uh, on, on this piece. With that, I'm going to give it back to you, to you, uh, Dulev. Thank you very much, Deander. So let me reshare and continue our uh, presentation for, uh, uh, for today. Here we go. All right. So Considering that uh, uh, we saw both uh, products now brings us to the question uh, of uh, Beto together and really the, the problem world of uh, uh, SOC organizations and uh, how they uh, um, try to ingest uh, both IT and OT uh, uh, information and alerts, uh, etc. So the first issue that uh, uh, we uh, need to address or the first challenge is the people's challenge. Soft organizations uh, up until now or mostly are not built and trained uh, uh, with uh, OT uh, technologies. Up until now, that wasn't uh, in the uh, core of the work. Uh, they don't speak the language. They need a way to work together with the uh, uh, OT personnel, uh, you know, uh, keeping in the same uh, 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 language and the same uh, 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 types of uh, UI to be able to work together on the same information. Um, from the process uh, uh, perspective, and that really connects us to this point, there's there are not really good uh, uh, processes uh, in place between those. If you have a, a, an incident or a security alert with the OT environment, who is responsible uh, uh, to remediate that? Who is responsible uh, uh, to say that this was uh, mitigated? Um, for a lot of the organizations, those are questions that are uh, still remain unanswered and they're looking for the best way to do this. And the last part is the uh, uh, technology. Most uh, uh, SIM sole solutions don't have OT security uh, baked in. Uh, they don't have any uh, information that relates to OT. And even if they do, even if you can uh, forward uh, uh, the OT security alerts, that basically uh, ends the tender, uh, show the information uh, uh, with the uh, uh, workbooks that you have and the MITRE attack uh, uh, framework. So consider that all the information that you have in the field of IoT eventually can be uh, displayed in different layers, whether it's the cloud layer of the field of IoT or Sentinel. That really brings you some uh, uh, added value. Now, Trying to answer that uh, question as to um, why Sentinel and Defender are better together. So the first part of this is a uh, centralized uh, uh, visibility. You are able to, to view the alerts for Defender for IoT and for uh, uh, your other uh, uh, sensors and uh, products in your network in one place. And all the alerts flow into Sentinel from all those solutions. Second part is the ease of deployment. Tiandra just showed you that uh, when you deploy the connector for Defender of IoT, it's a couple of uh, uh, clicks of a button and that's it. Now, this is important because as you, uh, if you try to uh, connect different uh, uh, products before, you know that uh, when you have alerts, you forward syslogs maybe, you have a lot of uh, parsing and configurations to do. And if you have a cloud connected sensor uh, for Defender of IoT, all that is baked uh, uh, out of the box. Uh, third point that we have here is a direct link. So when you have alerts in the uh, Sentinel, you are also uh, have uh, the ability to click through them uh, from Sentinel directly uh, for Defender of IoT to view these alerts and uh, all the information that you need. Uh, the seamless experience, so you saw um, the different uh, uh, UIs and the different uh, user experience uh, for the products. For a lot of our uh, uh, customers, this is significant. Why? Because the OT engineer and the IT engineer work in a similar uh, uh, UI. And uh, 
one alert that starts from uh, a different authority and gets to center has a, a seamless uh, walk through, and we'll touch on this uh, further in the, uh, the demo later on. Always up to date. So this is a, a, a very interesting example. So consider uh, what we had uh, just a couple of months ago with uh, a log for shell uh, All around the world, the security community was busy with it uh, in Microsoft as well for, uh, for a while. But when Microsoft deploys threat intelligence uh, that regards log for shell and updates all of its uh, uh, sensors and uh, security stack products, so if you're a, a Microsoft-centric uh, organization, all your um, Defender for Endpoint, all your Defender for IoT, Sentinel, everything gets the uh, Threat Intel package uh, in one go, and that saves you a lot of work with updating different products at different times and chasing vendors to see when they are releasing their patches. Faster deployment cycles, so when we release uh, uh, updates with Defender for IoT, it's automatically, of course, compatible with uh, Sentinel. Single workflow for the alerts, we touched on this. And the last point, uh, which I really saved for last, because uh, from my experience working with a lot of our customers, this is one of the most important thing. The, the common language between uh, uh, SecOps and OT engineers, when they see the same information, they can discuss the same information, um, it makes things a lot easier uh, communicating and understanding and uh, getting things uh, resolved as fast as possible. Um, and this uh, 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 brings us uh, uh, just uh, uh, to the workflow. This is what we'll uh, demonstrate in a second uh, in the live demo that we have uh, prepared for you. So without further ado, allow me to uh, jump straight into uh, the demo that we have. So let me reshare here for a second. Okay, so as I said earlier, um, this is our Defender for IoT. Now, for the purpose of uh, this demo, let's say that I'm an OT engineer in our uh, factory. Uh, we are manufacturing whatever you think uh, we're manufacturing here. And uh, during my shift today, uh, everything is going fine, but uh, uh, suddenly I see some of these alerts that uh, are kind of uh, uh, worrisome to me. Specifically, I see some controller uh, uh, resets and I see uh, an S7 uh, uh, stop command for one of my PLCs from uh, this uh, uh, HMI. And I see that uh, there's also a stop command from this engineering workstation. I can click through to see uh, uh, more details on the assets involved, as well as uh, view the relevant uh, event timeline. And I can see here that just before that uh, PLC stop command, uh, there's a firmware update initiated from this IP, and there's a configuration right. And I'll now need to uh, do some internal investigation and try to figure out who in the plant uh, uh, might have initiated this because uh, this is not something that uh, should be happening while we are uh, in production trying to manufacture maybe what I mentioned earlier, specific uh, uh, door uh, for a car. Uh, but keep in mind that while uh, I'm in the uh, factory and walking through this and uh, seeing this alert, at the same time, this is cloud connected sensor. So it's flowing into uh, the Defender for IoT uh, uh, cloud uh, uh, part in Azure. And I can also choose to view the alerts uh, from different uh, uh, sites um, in this uh, uh, particular part. So this is the Azure part of Defender for IoT. And keep in mind that uh, if uh, uh, we mentioned earlier, MITRE attack, remember that? So. When you view alerts uh, for Defender for IoT uh, in the cloud, I can also see the relevant tactics and techniques that uh, uh, correlate to them. Now, I mentioned earlier, we are cloud connected. We are connected also to Sentinel. So while I'm doing this, the under who's minding uh, the SOC operation also uh, uh, encounters uh, incidents. The under, do you want to present? Absolutely, Dolev. Thanks. Uh, so uh, I'm going to um, put a hat on of the SOC 
uh, analyst. Um, so I've configured the, uh, the IoT connector. I can see data flowing in. And uh, as the tier one analyst, my primary function and job is to triage incidents and make sure that I'm looking at a true positive or false positive and escalate where necessary. So one thing that that occurs uh, when I when I look at the incidents, so I can I can filter on it. Uh, I can see this S7 stop command, right? Which is a, a pretty kind of severe action. Uh, it's currently flagged as low. Um, and I can see here on the right side, I can see the entities that are involved, et cetera. So what I also wanted to relay here is that um, we are driving uh, kind of the efficient uh, bridge, building the bridge between OT, IoT and, and the SOC. So a couple of things, if I want to reduce noise and let's say that these are kind of common uh, devices, uh, I can also click on actions and uh, create an automation rule. Because if I want to be efficient and these are known devices, uh, you can see that I can create certain conditions, right? Based on the automation uh, rule name, but I can list here devices that I potentially know about. And if that's the fact, uh, I can kind of uh, approve these and I can automatically change the status uh, to close. So I won't be kind of, uh, um, having a lot of noise in, in my stock because, hey, it, uh, it's benign positive, but it is expected. I can also do a couple of other things, right? I can add multiple conditions where I can say I want to filter on a lot of fields and a lot of uh, types here. If, if it is a specific vendor and it equals like uh, maybe HP, something like that, I can do the same thing. Also, the actions that I can take, I can also invoke a playbook if I wanted to. Uh, and that brings me to the next section that I wanted to show. Um, so let's assume that I'm not doing this right and I am the SOC analyst that needs to triage this. So the first thing that I want to do is kind of look at the full details. What is this incident, uh, incident about? So uh, as said, uh, I, can see, I, I can see a couple of things. I can see, for example, well, it's a low severity. It automatically got assigned to me. Um, there are no tags. And why am I mentioning tags? Because this is often being used in a SOC uh, analyst world to kind of identify uh, specific incidents, right? Um, so I can add comments. There are no comments here. So I can look at the timeline, similar as what Dolev showed. I can look at similar incidents. So if I have entities in in uh, in common, that would show here, and I can show uh, look at the specific alerts. I can uh, dive into uh, the alerts if I wanted to. No comments here. So what I wanted to do, uh, I have little insight in in this data, right? How do I get more data? So what I can do now is trying to kind of execute something automatically, which normally I can do automatically, but that would not be a fun um, uh, playbook uh, to show. So what I'm doing here, I'm invoking automatically a playbook, well, semi-automatically, which will do kind of a triage automatically for me. And again, I could have this automatically do for me. So notice the low severity here and notice the tags and, um, just got populated, right? So notice that now I can see my severity got updated. Why? Because this is a factory device and therefore we're increasing the severity to high. We identified the owner, which is Dolev, and we sent him an email, but also we added a tag here that it is a factory device. So I can do easier kind of triaging that I'm identifying uh, this. So uh, based on, on the automation that I can automatically run, I can autom automatically send the owner an email. So uh, you can identify owners and automatically I send an email like, hey Dolev, there's a critical event related to your device. You might want to investigate. Click on this link to see more information. What I didn't point out is there is a kind of direct link. So if I need to investigate this at the source, I can click easily on this link and I would automatically go to uh, Defender for IT to do uh, additional uh, additional in investigations. So I I'm just showing you kind of the tip of the iceberg, what you can do with uh, 
uh, with, with Sentinel. And this actually is, is behind the scenes is uh, checking a so-called watch list, kind of a list that you can populate with important assets for you to interact with. So let's uh, take a look at another example, how Sentinel integrates with, uh, with Defender for IAT. There was a second concerning um, alert, an incident that got created. You can see here uh, that a device connected to a public IP, which is not supposed that uh, that should not be, be happening. So a couple of things, I'm showing you um, a kind of things behind the scenes. Um, this is an example how you can build a custom um, custom rule for an incident. And the reason that I want to show you this is because of the power of what we can do behind the scenes. What I wanted to show you is this. We can automatically, without raising an incident, check whether an IP that is involved in that incident, whether that's, an, that's a, a private or a public IP. So in this example, I'm filtering on whether uh, this IP is not a private IP, right? If it is a private IP, okay, that's fine. If it is a public IP, I wanna do a couple of things. And the second thing is, I am checking again whether this source device is a factory device. And if so, I'm going to increase the severity to high. And that allows me to do a couple of interesting things with this incident, although the source might be different. So you can see here the entity mapping. I will map entities with our schema inside of Sentinel, with, which will come out of the information. But also I can add some additional um, details like adding key value pairs, which makes more sense for enriching the incidents. And lastly, if I look at the alert details, I can do a couple of uh, efficient things here. First of all, I can add a variable. So immediately for the SOC analyst, it shows what device was this uh, incident about. Also, I am injecting a new severity based on the query I just ran. So you remember when we looked at the query, I said there's a new severity when I see a match with the source device, which is a factory device that increases my uh, uh, my um, kind of my urgency on it. So let's go back to the to the incident details, right? Because I want to look at what entities do I see. So you can see here that I see a bunch of entities. Are these malicious? Are the are the are these trusted? At this point, I don't know, right? So what will I do? And again, I can run this automatically. I can run a kind of a, um, a query or a request to uh, an external source like VirusTotal that would uh, kind of give me uh, comments here that I can triage. It will add some tags and it will uh, give me additional context for me to decide whether this is a true positive or not and an, and an urgent one for me to, uh, to further investigate. Now you can see a couple of interesting things, right? I just got a confirmation back from VirusTotal that this is probably a harmless kind of, uh, kind of IP address. This makes sense. Again, for the public IP, same thing. Uh, this is a harmless, but uh, what is interesting is that this will continue to run. And let me do a refresh here. Um, then I'll, I'll see a couple of things when, uh, when I got a match with another IP address that is part of my, uh, my threat intelligence, for example. That will, will show up here if I run a query uh, against this. Now, this, uh, this gives me kind of uh, an ease, right? There's no harm in this specific, um, uh, in this specific incident. But maybe I want to kind of uh, investigate a little bit more to see what kind of relations do I have. So for that, I'm going to switch back, uh, sorry. And now I'm going to do an investigation. So I wanna run in an investigation here. Uh, and what I typically want to do is look at the uh, the incident here, what I have. So this is my, my current incident, right? And I can click here on properties, give me all the properties. What, what if, uh, if there are more kind of relationships and what I can do here, I can make this slide a little bit nicer and move this around. And what I wanna do is I wanna look at related alerts. So are there related alerts against this IP or that IP? So I can click on this. 
And what this does, whoa, it brings me a lot of information on relationships. You can see the dotted lines here. And my eye immediately gets drawn to this one. Apparently there was a port scan against this IP. So what I wanted to do now is add this alert to the incident. So it got a little bit enriched. And now I'm adding this incident right here. So when I go back, you can now see that uh, if I open this up one more time, you can now can see that I have multiple uh, incidents against this, uh, uh, this original incident. And the last thing I, I want to do, I want to collaborate with an IET engineer like, like Dolev. I can do an, another action, which is create a team site. And why is this highly efficient? I can collaborate in, in a couple of more ways. So let me show you uh, the team site that I created based on a similar incident. So this is the team site I created. You can see the incident right here. I connected to uh, a public IP. So I can co cooperate and I can um, get Dolev on a call and we can talk about uh, uh, the, the, uh, the architecture and I can highlight this but also we can uh, collaborate, uh, do some posts here. I can add uh, a post. I can uh, have uh, a OneNote stand up and all of this is, is integrated fully with Sentinel to collaborate. So with this, I'm uh, going to stop and hand it over to Dolev and I hope I relate the power of the Better Together story. Thanks, Deander. Yeah, so Looking into that uh, incident and the uh, uh, internet uh, connectivity, uh, I found that uh, someone installed a, a rootkit on one of my engineering workstation. So thanks for pointing that uh, connection out for me. Um, really trying to uh, wrap this up and uh, getting uh, leaving you with uh, some of the important takeaways here. So. Taking back to uh, this slide, what I think uh, is most important for everyone to take from this is the experience for Sentinel and Defender uh, uh, working together. So the centralized visibility, how easy it is to deploy with out of the box analytics tools or uh, uh, configuring and uh, customizing them to your organization's needs. The direct link between them, the seamless experience, uh, keeping all of the products up to date, uh, both with Threat Intel and with one another for the uh, development cycles. Um, the single workflow for the OT and the uh, SOC engineer and the uh, common language uh, between uh, uh, the entire organization. Uh, wrapping this up, uh, I'll like to uh, uh, invite all of you to join our uh, uh, private uh, uh, community to collaborate with us uh, uh, there to work directly with uh, 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 program managers from Microsoft on the uh, products that we love uh, uh, developing and uh, delivering to our uh, customers, uh, as well as some uh, useful uh, uh, links for you to have some uh, more uh, reading and uh, get more into that. Uh, with that, I'd really like to thank everyone for joining us for this uh, session today on the Better Together for Sentinel and uh, Defender of IoT. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Jola and Tiander, for being our guest today, and thank you for an excellent presentation. And especially thank you to all of the team who helped answer questions. Um, since we do have a few extra minutes, I just wanted to remind everyone that our next Microsoft Sentinel webinar will be on March 29th, and it will focus on using watch lists to manage alerts, reduce alert fatigue, and improve SOC efficiency. And you can register for that webinar at aka.ms slash security community. And our next Microsoft Defender for IoT webinar will be on April 6th, and it will be on how to discover and secure IoT devices in the enterprise environment. You can register for this webinar and many more at aka.ms slash security community. And at the same time, I would like to remind listeners that the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements is to visit that landing page at aka.ms slash security community and while there, you'll find easy ways to navigate and find the resources and learning content relevant to our security products 
and their communities. A good start would be browsing our bite-sized product videos, Ninja trainings, recordings of past webinars, GitHub communities, and more. We'd love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars. Please take a minute submitting your webinar feedback at aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. Thank you and see you next time. Goodbye.